Hey, I'm not judging, but some video games require tentacles, at least to a degree. So with this BFX pack, you'll be able to check out how these tentacles have been made and how you could replicate those into your own game. Let it be known that this is not a production ready blueprint or asset, it's just for study purposes. And that's the reason why it's free mostly, but yeah, in this sense, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick run through the project and show you how everything is put together. So essentially, uh, this pack contains some tentacles that react to the player when you get close to a certain range. And then some tentacles are randomly spawned, uh, directed towards surfaces around them. To let the players go through this invisible blocking wall that the tentacles create, just press the E key on your keyboard while being on the affected area. So that's right. So now you can go through and that's super easy. Then again, you'll find out that, wow, those are a lot of tentacles. Those are semi-procedural. So that means that the shape of the tentacles are already determined by some geometry, but uh, the movements of it and the direction, the positioning and everything is set via blueprint. So it's completely dynamic. You can select how many of those you want to have and how long do you want the actual goo monster to check for surfaces to stick the tentacles around. Also, you can see that the tentacles are not attached to the ground or the monster itself, or maybe even the player. But if you try long enough, you'll find out that uh, it's also affecting that mesh over there. And that's just because you can assign attack to specific actors in order for the tentacle goo monster to be able to grab onto those. For example, here you can find out that it's grabbing into the white cubes, but not the stylized female character. So that's pretty nice. And this one is affecting mostly the stylized female character, but could technically also grab onto one of the white squares around it, but it's kind of difficult <laughs> to nail that down. So yeah, boom. The tentacles will only be attached to meshes that are either static or dynamic, but they also need to be tagged, as you can see here on screen. For example, let's deactivate the tentacle surfaces for this character here. Let's access the actor in the outliner and then scroll down a bit until you find the actor tab. Then click on it, scroll down a bit more, access the tags, and then you'll find out that index zero is anchorable. That's the tag that needs to be assigned. If we say, for example, zero, and then we possess the character again, you'll find that, yep, the tentacles are not being attached to the character anymore. If this seems too complex to you, or if you are just a beginner and don't know what all of this is all about, don't worry. For the time being, you can just save this in your library and then access it and learn from it once you get a better understanding of how Unreal works. But it's fine. Don't worry about it. What's also really cool is that you can press the left mouse button and right mouse button to both zoom and activate slow-mo. So you can see the tentacles acting in slow motion. And it's pretty great because you can see that there's slight transition there. And you can even experience a bit of artifacting depending on the length of those tentacles. Well, as said, they're not perfect, but they work pretty great, especially at a normal speed. One thing that's pretty cool too is just coming in here and making it explode, which makes it go crazy and then splats around. Oh, also, have you noticed that the sound effects are dynamic? The sound effects will play where the actual end point of the tentacles hit the surface. So it's super great because it's giving that extra layer of realism and of polish to that small pack, but it's really great. We love the sound effects. They have been made by our sound effects guy, Chinchilla, which is an awesome SFX artist, I highly recommend you check him out. Right, so now for the actual blueprint parameters that are exposed into a user level that are super useful even if you don't know how blueprints work at all. Let's check them out. So it's min and max checks, which is a range of how many checks, how many tentacles will this goo monster try to spawn. So in this case, if it's the same for both, it will be a fixed amount of 
tentacles, a fixed amount of checks. So you can see that now three tentacles have been spawned and then again, and then again. So it's always three tentacles. If you set this to be a crazy number like 333, this will likely break the computer. <laughs> okay, it's pretty performant. You can see that it's only finding 36 surfaces in 3333 tries, which means that it's trying to spawn as many tentacles as possible, but you know, it's kind of trying to do so, but it's not really being able to. And that's just because of the way that this is programmed. It's checking for different surfaces around in a specific radius, doing multiple write casts, and then it's finding those surfaces and whatnot. So even if you do 333 checks, it's just gonna find some surfaces to stick to and it won't be that much of a higher cost on CPU or GPU in that sense. Then for the sense collision radius, it's very visual. It's the radius in which the goo monster will sense if the player is just coming nearby to activate the tentacles and the blocking radius. So you can see the block collision radius too, which is this sphere here. So it's way smaller or way bigger and that's just up to you. So just as an example, let's set this sense collision to be super high and then the block to be super low like that. So if I enter the radius, it will activate and then I can access uh, yeah, the zone at about that bit there and then deactivate the monster, which allows me to go through. Cube collision is just so the collisions turn into cubes instead of spheres. Might be nice uh, for cases like this one. And if you use the cube collision, you'll be able to edit the scale in different axes for that case because that's just really useful for level building and yeah, you know, so you're not that limited in terms of level design. Checks radius doesn't really have a visual parameter that you can check in the scene, but you can use the sense collision radius, for example, to check distance. So for example, this far away, which is this number. So let's round it up and copy and then paste it. And then you can bring that down again. So now you'll find that, yeah, it's sticking tentacles even to the surfaces that are a bit more far away and it keeps doing so, which is pretty nice. Loop safe is really important because that's just a way to telling the blueprint, hey, if you don't find any surfaces in this radius after X amount of tries, X amount of checks, then stop doing that, stop checking for stuff because if you don't do that, it will indefinitely just keep checking for stuff and it will absolutely destroy your performance, which is not ideal. It can even trap you and trap your game into a crash. So it's really not ideal. Draw debug type is really great because if you set this to be persistent and then play the game, you'll see that those red lines are the checks that the Goo Monster has made and the green ones are the ones that actually collided with something. But then again, depending on the distance, it's like deciding on whether to spawn uh, spline or not. In this case, you can see that those ones there have collided with a cube and have spawned a tentacle. Same with that one. But that's really annoying because, you know, right now if you exit and enter again, you'll keep seeing red lines and green lines and it's kind of annoying. <laughs> so. I highly suggest just using this for debugging and creating your levels and then removing this because the player doesn't need to see all of this. Ah, my eyes. <laughs> Finally, the goo type, which is just number one for a normal type of goo and number two for a dark type of goo. And as an extra, let's dive into the blueprint itself. Okay, this can be a bit daunting and intimidating, but don't worry about it. Same for the construction script. Once you learn how blueprints work, this is not that complex, really. Uh, essentially, this is checking for collisions and then you're activating a timeline which makes it so you can make the tentacles actually animate, uh, fading them in and fading them out. And also, this is the line trace. This is checking for the specific channels of the line trace, comparing stuff, uh, debugging stuff. So, and then here it's spawning some other particles and whatnot. So at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. You can download the asset and then check it out for yourself and hopefully get to learn something 
from this. If you'd like to suggest something or have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at perfects.com or join our Discord server in which we'll be able to respond to you super quickly. So have a really nice day and be sure to burst some of those goopy monsters around and place them on your game. Go crazy, change the colors, be creative with it. Even, I don't know, like create a couple different spline meshes and make them your own. All right? See ya. Bye bye.